Uh, hi, my name is Kim Canyon Grimaldi. I'm a PhD student in comparative literature. I study Arabic and Persian language, and I've been working with Harris Elementary School. Um, my name is Molly Cravey. I major in um, anthropology and Middle Eastern languages and cultures, and I've been taking Arabic. Um, this is my fourth semester, and I volunteer at Janice Guerrero Thompson Elementary School. Uh, my name is Adrock Loggi. I'm a first year PhD student in the History Department and I volunteer at DOS Elementary. My name is Estefi Valenzuela and I, is, I am a PhD student at UT. I study Arabic Linguistics and I volunteer at uh, Regan Early College High School. I currently have students from Syria, Iraq, and Sudan. Uh, they're both from Iraq. They're primarily Pashto speaking and from Afghanistan. Uh, we do have a few from uh, Iraq and some are also Dari speakers, so from the north of Afghanistan. Um, I'm a veteran of Operation Enduring Freedom 1213. Um, I deployed to Afghanistan for nine months, and I was the interpreter manager. Um, so I got to know my uh, interpreters very, very well. I got to know the police in our district in Kandahar very, very well, and the army, the army officers and soldiers I worked with very, very well. I worked with them about as much as I worked with Americans. Um, and you know, when they would talk about America, they loved it, and they wanted to go there, and they were very grateful for what we had done for the country of Afghanistan. Um, so when I heard that there's an opportunity to help them, to help their children, even though I don't know these people personally, I know, I know police officers and I know, uh, I know interpreters, I, I, I had to do it. You know, I, I don't think, I've never met a veteran who didn't feel strongly about interpreters. Um, and so the people who come over on the SIV program, are very, they're very special to me. Um, and it's very important to me that their children are taken care of. They deserve a chance and they need help. Like, they need extra help because they're coming from a very difficult situation and a language disadvantage. I feel I'm very lucky. I am receiving a great education. I decided to learn a language to be able to communicate to the people of those of that language and I thought I wanted to interact with those people and I thought that it was very important that I was able to put that skill to the service of others. Austin has worked really hard to bring and resettle refugees, uh, more so than a lot of other places. And a lot of the churches here are the ones that are sponsoring these refugees. Um, and so I knew that there were things that they couldn't provide but that I could and I wanted to do that. Oh, I kept volunteering because the kids are adorable. <laughs> um, well, same reason. Plus, uh, you know, I, I love them now. <laughs> like, I, I love their little faces, and they're my friends. They're my buddies, so, yeah. Uh, for that same reason, you know, the, um, you know, you hear stories about their parents, and they're working at Walmart in the stock room, and they used to be interpreters, they have a high school education, they could have stayed in Afghanistan, uh, or they're police officers, they were police officers, and now they work at, you know, a grocery store or a greeter or whatever, um, and their, their only real desire is for their children to have a better life, and to not grow up in fear, and to live in a cosmopolitan, multi-party democracy, and, uh, you know, if I can do that through being there for three hours a week, then I'll do that. Um, you know, it, it helps that the kids are really sweet. You know, it helps that the kids never cop an attitude. I've never had a discipline problem with them. I've never had a kid uh, say, I don't want to do this. You know, these are, you know, I wish every student I ever interacted with was, was like these kids. I just feel it that the more I do it, the more I feel that I should have done it before. That's exactly how I feel, that I cannot believe that sometimes we live in these bubbles and you don't leave your bubble and then when you leave it you realize how many wonderful things are to be done and that's I guess that's why. I had a really great experience last week um, so the science teacher gave me a list of vocabulary and I have to be honest I have never taught science on any level um, I have not taught science in English I have most certainly not taught science in Arabic so I've got a list of science vocabulary about fossils and different types of rocks <laughs> and I have three kids who've been here less than six months and don't understand any of these words in English. They don't understand the definitions. And so I'm trying to go back and forth with them and be like, okay, so 
fossils like how do we know that dinosaurs existed and one of the kids goes we don't <laughs> and I'm like well we do <laughs> there's evidence so you know what happens when you know we know that there used to be dinosaurs they died what gets left over we're trying to get them to fossils um, and so they finally go is tanin the Arabic word for dinosaur and I'm like I don't really know that word, but I don't think so. And so they start, one of my kids starts doing this great, like, mimicry of a tanin. And she's going, you know, like this, and like this. And I'm like, is there really an Arabic word for pterodactyl? Like, I, I'm really surprised that there is a specific Arabic word for pterodactyl, but okay. So I teach them the word pterodactyl. And then we happen to be in the school library, which has a model of a pterodactyl that I found after that. And I'm like, yeah, pterodactyl. And they're like, that is not a tanin. And I'm like, okay, all right, so what is a tanin? And they go back to doing their, they're flapping their wings and showing me the nose. And so finally we get out an iPad and just Google image search tanin, and it's a dragon. And I'm like, okay, all right, tanin is dragon in English, and those are not real. <laughs> they were not dinosaurs. Um, they're imaginary, guys. So uh, that was pretty fun. I mean, the kids are very happy. They're very happy kids. They're just sort of happy to have iPods or the iPads in the classroom and they can play games on them and they have blocks and they have friends and they have balls to throw at each other. Um, and I think every week, the thing that really I look forward to and keeps me sane is working with kindergartners who take joy and delight in the simplest possible things. And they're very, very happy. They, yeah, they normally are surprised, happily surprised. They're like, oh my gosh, you speak Arabic? Thank you, they're very grateful. I think they are very, they're very curious about you too. They ask you where you're from. How do you learn Arabic? And for me, it's very interesting because then they ask me if I'm American, and I when I tell them that I'm from Spain, they get also very excited because they some of them know some Spanish, so some of them also try to speak Spanish a little bit with me, and they I just would say that they just seem very grateful and happy that somebody's talking to them in Arabic. Yeah. I want the greater Austin community to know that how loving my kids are um, and how much how grateful they are to be here there have been a lot of times when um, I'm not always sure what a kid knows when they come to me and I'm not really always sure what they've been doing in their classroom or what the standard curriculum looks like so I often ask them about okay what did you do when you were in Syria and sometimes or I'll do what did you do when you were in Lebanon what, what did you study in Lebanon how what was your school like in Lebanon and lots of times the response will be there wasn't one. And that I want the Austin community to know that these kids are so grateful to be in school now, even in the moments when they're not really sure what they're supposed to be doing. They are happy to be here. They're happy that their parents are not as stressed as they were living in a refugee camp or living in a war-torn country. Um, they're happy to know that they're safe. And they just love being here so much. <laughs> that it's really precious to watch them develop bonds with their fellow students on especially about soccer because who doesn't love soccer but yeah i guess i want them to know that they're just families because when we think of refugees you don't think of the father that goes to school because the teenage his teenager daughter has got into trouble for any other for the same reasons that all teenagers get in trouble and i think when you think or you hear the word refugee you don't think of those parents and those mothers and those kids. So I think I would like them to think of them as families. They're, they're great people. Their families are great. The kids are great. They're excellent students. They are going to enrich Austin and they're going to enrich your schools. They're going to enrich our community. Um, and, you know, I really. I can't emphasize enough how good these kids are at being students, that how happy they are to be in school, and how happy their families are for them to be in school, and how happy they are to be learning. Um, and the attitude and the enthusiasm that they bring whenever I'm there is really rejuvenating to me. It's really uh, motivating to me. Um, and, you know, I, I sincerely believe it is motivating to the other students around them and it enriches the schools that they're in. These kids have got this. They're going to do an excellent job. They probably need a little extra love and care early on, but you know, they're going to be excellent contributors to this community for years to come.